Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IPFS and Filecoin 101 workshop. Joining us today is Jenks, who will be taking us through this session. And with that, I'll pass it over to Jenks to get the session started. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenks, your friendly developer advocate from Filecoin Foundation. Today, I'm going to give you an introductory talk on IPFS and Filecoin uh, 101. Um, this will be a uh, acting as a vocabulary for your rest of the workshops. This will be the workshop to introduce all of the work workshops uh, for the rest of this hackathon. So let's get started and also welcome to Hack Hackfest. So um, at first, I'll talk a little bit about introduction to Web3. Um, then I'll uh, move on to IPFS and how IPFS solves some pieces of puzzles for Web3. Um, and uh, equally important, I'll talk about uh, how Filecoin uh, is contributing to Web3 infrastructure. Um, I'll then introduce a few products and tools that you can use in your, in your hackathon, um, and also uh, some case studies on why people have used IPFS and Filecoin so you know the business behind it. Um, I'll then talk about the future roadmaps. So um, overall, we are, as a human being, witnessing a, a great movement from a, a centralized centralization of web technology to a more decentralized future and to eventually to a distributed future. Um, the current internet that we use, uh, we rely on every day is very centralized by design choices. IPv4, IPv6, uh, DNI, DNS internet service providers and HTTP protocol that we use every day are all having this centralized uh, design thinking. Um, it is there's nothing wrong, uh, including Tim Berner Lee also claimed that you know the internet will be decent, uh, it will be a centralized thing because of the nature of TCP, IP, and HD protocols. It, there's nothing wrong with this design. It's just a design choice at the beginning. But because of this design choice, many organizations and platforms have accumulated a tremendous amount of power um, over uh, over time, and uh, they're influencing a lot of our lives. So some of the centralized uh, platform companies have access to our data um, by our social media profiles and use this um, as the basis of their business model. Um, they're, it's designed to collect massive amount of data from users and being able to capitalize on those data. Um, this one, this, this lack of ownership and probability uh, around that data um, and, uh, is, is, causing, is causing systematic failures. Um, this shouldn't be this way, right? Um, if you have systems that are centralized, um, all you need to do is just take that um, central, take down that centralized point, and the whole thing will fall apart. Companies have tried to decentralize uh, their infrastructure, having point of presence everywhere, um, but the design is still very much uh, following a authority uh, within that decentralized uh, world. Um, we're seeing gradual movements to decentralization. Um, and what people uh, really want, um, people who believe in Web3, is a distributed future where users are, um, are empowered to provide services, uh, where everything is uh, unstoppable, censorship-free. Um, uh, they are open but private, and then uh, you have verified uh, data, um, and you have um, uh, data that is not siloed uh, to certain companies and certain organizations. So um, incoming Web3, everyone uh, is building uh, Web3 uh, fiercely, and there is a lot of capital certainly flowing to Web3 space right now to fill the uh, the gap between uh, innovation and implementation. So what is Web3 um, exactly? One of the explanations that I enjoyed a lot is from Juan Bennett, uh, founder of IPFS and Protocol Labs. Uh, he said that Web3 is a broad movement in a group of associated technologies and people aiming to make the web and the internet more decentralized, verifiable, and secure. This sentence is is beautiful because Web3, there is, up till now, I don't think there is a strict definition of it, uh, but uh, it, it represents a group of people and then a group of technology that people are trying to make um, to work towards a single goal, that is decentralization of the future. So Web3, um, um, the other version that I have heard uh, of Web3 that I really like, and, and this breaks down into different things, is that Web3 has three components to it. Uh, one is the uh, physical and the, and, the, uh, and the, on the protocol level, it is going to be a distributed web. 
So it should work, uh, should be designed to work offline. It should be faster, not slower. It should be safer, um, not less secure. And there should, n should not be a central point of co coordination for the distributed web. And there should be uh, permanent links for, uh, for contents online. Um, the second part is about making sure that the computers and, uh, and people have a trustless network to work in. Uh, this is where blockchain comes in. Blockchain is able to provide uh, publicly verifiable data. Uh, it encourages permissionless entry and exiting if uh, anyone wants. And everyone is incentivized to do the right thing in the network. So uh, you shouldn't worry about uh, certain uh, entities uh, starting behaving uh, as adversary to you. Uh, so you don't have to trust uh, anyone for it. Uh, you can trust that the system itself is going to run by itself um, and in a, in a good way. The last one is semantic web. And I think that this is very beautiful. Uh, it's about creating a graph of knowledge and making sure that the machines understand the meaning behind uh, the data. So we don't have to re repeat this, this information everywhere uh, on the internet. So for example, I live in Melbourne, Australia, and Melbourne should be a single object on the internet as a, a uh, as a, maybe a node of the knowledge graph. Um, and then people can, if, uh, if it is marked as a location, then people can do certain things with it. For example, navigating to it, um, and, uh, getting interesting spots, uh, of this location. Uh, so that is concept of semantic web. So how is, uh, IPFS and Filecoin helping with this web three, uh, movement? Um, IPFS provides a peer to peer protocol, um, to, for, for internet to work on. Um, as I said earlier, the protocol itself is, uh, centralized by design. Um, and then Filecoin is, uh, aiming to provide the infrastructure for the web three, um, the applications that we use every day, Airbnb, uh, Uber. And I like, uh, they all run very hefty infrastructures right now. There's no way we can build a web three, a truly decentralized internet, um, and allow developers to build internet scale applications without using uh, a hefty infrastructure. And that is what a uh, Falcoin project intend to do exactly how we will take a look at it. IPFS stands for interplanetary file system, apart from being the uh, the, the, the favorite, uh, acronym in web three that I know of, uh, it is also a very good idea. Um, it is very essential to, uh, web three because, um, one of the most important functions of the computer system and the, the internet is file systems. Uh, if there's no way for computers to understand how to store files and retrieve them, uh, it is going to pose a very, uh, very big problem. So IPFS is a peer to peer protocol, uh, that intends to be uh, the decentralized version of HTTP that will allow, um, users, uh, or nodes to communicate with each other and transfer files, uh, between each other without using a, a, a centralized server in between. How does it do that? Um, it is using, um, it is using uh, peer to peer technology. Um, the underlying technology, there's a few, but one of the most important one is lib P2P. Uh, which allows, um, the software to talk through many internet, uh, interfaces, um, and then speak to each other, uh, as a cluster of computers and not, uh, not talking to one single server and asking for, for information. So in this, uh, swarm of computers of IPFS nodes, um, you have photos and files, and these nodes will provide services to each other. Um, they have a unique ID, so people know who they are. Um, and then they, uh, they use services from each other as well. And the content on uh, IPFS is able to be addressed, uh, based on its, uh, content and not its location, because we're trying to get rid of this location based schema, uh, in IPFS. Um, and then, uh, the class of computers will help each other to find the content on the network. It is fully distrib distributed, no central server. Uh, it is quite resilient and it's offline first, um, design. So what that means is if you take a chunk of the, um, computer, uh, take a part of the network offline, um, they should still work within itself, um, by itself until they are reconnected to the main cluster. Um, or if you take a single one out, it still works by itself. It just may not have access to certain, uh, peers in the network will be less useful, but it should still work. So it, it really promotes resiliency. 
the most important part in IPFS, uh, and I think is uh, is one of the uh, most valuable part, is the content addressing uh, technology. Uh, we um, in Web two, we always type in a domain uh, name, which gets translated to IP and port. Um, but in IPFS, how computers find files is actually through the ID of the system, which is a hash, hash digest of the whole file itself. Um, this hash digest replaces the uh, uh, address-based location, um, and it basically is a fingerprint of the file, and then um, the computers uh, within the network will uh, talk to each other and see who has this file and serve that. So imagine if your um, computer has that file itself, uh, visiting IPFS or visiting a website could be retrieving that file from your computer. And that's ultra fast because we know there's no latency, there's no network, uh, there's no need for communication with external systems. Uh, or if this file lies on your Wi-Fi um, network, so someone else's computer in your home, perhaps, um, this will be retrieved from there and not from a US uh, server, for example. Um, or if uh, the file in IPFS is located in uh, the other side of the world, um, the system is able to um, broadcast messages um, and gossip with each other and find out where the content is and eventually get through many, many hoops to find the content and then retrieve it for you. Um, so um, it works very like uh, BitTorrent, um, but it's made for uh, the next generation uh, application. So made for real world applications out there. So the underlying stack for building IPFS is IPLD, uh, Interplanetary Linked Data, and LibP2P. So LibP2P also has a bounty in this hackathon. I encourage you to take a look at that. On top of Link LibP2P, you can build many, many systems, not just a file system. Um, and lib P2P is trusted by uh, Polkadot Project and Ethereum. IPFS has gone through a tremendous growth uh, since 2019. Um, it had about uh, only 800 contributors, now to uh, about 11,000. Um, the performance has improved a lot. It took 40 seconds to find uh, five files in, at the beginning, which is very slow. Um, and uh, in 2022, the gateway, uh, I think the 95% 90, tile is a lot quicker. Um, now it's probably a, a little bit better than that. I think there was some optim optimization on routing that's been done. Um, and if you're using a gateway that caches content for you, then it will be a lot faster than 400 milliseconds. Uh, we have uh, now five browser integrations. Uh, Brave and Opera natively integrate with IPFS. So if you're typing IPFS, column slash slash and then the CID um, Brave or Opera, you can find the file or the website uh, directly that way. And this is a future sort of we want. Um, monthly user um, increased to 50 million and IPFS uh, empowered apps are up to 1000 now. Um, it, it is a, a huge ecosystem of developers and builders out there using this, uh, this protocol. Uh, we also have many gateway operators. I think there's uh, the monthly request is over 1 billion. It is uh, uh, over these uh, gateway requests. So uh, there is a real demand for, uh, for retrieving content from IPFS. There are many tooling you can use to interact with IPFS, including IPFS desktop client. Um, I'm, I have that installed on my Mac, uh, and I bring it up to store some files myself. Uh, there is a CLI tool that you can run and runs a daemon behind it. Uh, so it provides API interfaces, a web UI for you to visit on your browser uh, and have that uh, fine control over your node. And it's, op it's, also able to, um, it's also able to provide some services that you need behind the scenes. Um, you don't always have to install IPFS on your computer to use it. You can install it on the server or you can pay someone to host it for you. So Pinata and Infura to providers of private IPFS nodes that you can you can use to access the, the vast IPFS network. Um, uh, there are uh, also implementations of IPFS in different languages, including some uh, native uh, OS uh, environments. So you can embed that IPFS uh, module inside of your uh, application where or wherever uh, you want it to. This is great for uh, decentralization of um, uh, of IPFS because um, the more you can uh, implement on your device, uh, the more 
a kind of the more point of presence or nodes we have in the network, it's better for decentralization that way. There's a few things that's uh, pretty exciting that's coming coming our way uh, to make uh, the life of lives of builder easier. Uh, one of them is Iron uh, project, Iron dot computer, uh, and they are trying to make a very lightweight IPFS for uh, mobile native uh, devices. Um, there is also uh, a content exchange improvements uh, called Carpool, and uh, IPFS uh, debuted on uh, Unreal Engine and Unity earlier last year um, to to tap into the gaming uh, development industry. Um, there is also native integration of IPFS into tools like Curl, FF, MPEG, uh, browsers, and and more. Uh, a lot of things are very exciting. If you just search on Google IPFS implementation, you will find quite a few of them. There are a couple of sites for you to find more things, exciting things like that. We can't always keep track of uh, what is happening in the ecosystem. Uh, awesome.ipfs.io is a site that is hosted on IPFS, and then it showcases all of the projects that are using uh, IPFS. Uh, or if you did something really, really cool on IPFS, please uh, feel free to submit your uh, idea there and let other people know about your how you use IPFS. And there is also a official um, ecosystem uh, ecosystem site for you to look up which companies are having collaboration or using IPFS, and that's ecosystem.ipfs.tech. So hop on there and uh, take a look once in a while. You might find something really cool. So now on to Filecoin. Um, now, uh, IPFS really provides a good ways for computers to talk to each other and store files in a very decentralized way. In my work, across planets as well, uh, but who is going to um, actually pay for the infrastructure and who is going to establish, build the, all the plumbing that it needs to connect different computers together and who are going to pay for the computers, right? So uh, Filecoin is established to solve this uh, problem. It is designed in the in initial phase, designed to encourage a mass of hardware to give this Web3 thing a, uh, a, 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 a kick at the beginning. Uh, so Filecoin is the largest decentralized storage network uh, in the world. Um, there are about 3,600 uh, storage providers uh, or node operators, some uh, project calls it, um, around the world. Um, and then the, it, it represents over 40 countries. Um, this commitment uh, from our storage providers um, are not just in terms of hardware investment, they also invest uh, substantially, uh, monetarily or financially to ensure the network. So Filecoin has um, uh, cl has collateral system and slashing system. Um, so uh, the total pledged amount of coins are uh, 147 million as of April this year. Uh, this is a huge uh, financial commitment that people have put in to secure the network. Filecoin enables open services for data and adds an incentive layer to IPFS. This is um, this is kind of a global digital economy that we have started uh, to help people to find data center services, uh, help people who needs data center services and who has data center services to provide to them. It is a kind of a market for hard drives uh, like Airbnb. So if you have large amount of files that you need to solve uh, store. Uh, for a certain amount of time, you can make uh, deals with uh, people who own these uh, private data centers uh, around the world um, and then make a deal with them. And then the Filecoin blockchain is able to keep track of, um, uh, to provide the underlying security behind it. It facilitates the, the, the storage deals. And then it ensures that all of the storage providers on the network is doing the right thing to protect clients' interests. Uh, that is, it, you know, um, providing data storage uh, reliable. Um, it is a layer one uh, project in the Web3 world. It is designed for storage, uh, but it's not limited to storage. Filecoin's uh, master plan uh, always includes things that are not uh, not storage because for storage is the first step. It's not the last step we'll take. Um, we are also interested in building a data retrieval network, um, decentralized CDN services. So. Anything that gets stored into the Filecoin, we can retrieve it uh, at a very fast speed, uh, performance speed. Um, and also, we're interested in providing um, uh, developers with DAP tools, tools. So we have built Filecoin Virtual Machine that allows people to compute over Filecoin blockchain state. 
Um, and then uh, we are also wanting to uh, get into the compute business as well. So Falcoin has projects that are focused on perfecting decentralized way of uh, compute, uh, especially over Falcoin nodes where the valuable data is stored. It's very expensive to move data around on the internet. There are some key benefits. Falcoin is compatible with Web3 protocols. We have built bridges with Near. Um, and then uh, now with the help of SEVM, we're building more interoperability um, uh, integrations. So uh, Falcoin is more uh, more nimble with other, other blockchains out there. Um, we are also providing uh, verifiable data. So a lot of data centers actually charge more money if you want to secure the data. Um, so making sure that data is not tempered or lost or, or corrupt. Um, Falcoin, thanks to IPFS design, can provide the verifiable data with no extra cost. Um, uh, Falcoin is secured by cryptographic proofs, and I will talk about a few primitives later in my presentation. And it is massive in size because it is designed so. Um, Falcoin, from the from the economic design perspective, is encouraging enterprises to join the business. Falcoin um, algorithm. There are some details about Falcoin blockchain. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can look take a look at um, Falcoin specs. So if you search Falcoin spec, you will be led to specification page. And that talks about uh, all of these primitives in, in details and link to research papers and stuff like that. Um, feel free to dig deeper there. Uh, but for consensus, we are a probabilistic uh, BFT. So something called an expected consensus um, for proving. It is uh, more, more like a proof of storage and uh, plus uh, proof of stake. So it's a combination of these two. We call them uh, proof of uh, proof of space time uh, and proof of replication. So the verification is uh, primarily zk snark. Uh, we use zk snark to reduce uh, the block time to meet the block time and also reduce the message message size. Broadcast method is libp P two P that I mentioned earlier, and some of the cryptographic primitives are uh, Merkle tree Mer or Merkle DAC for data integrity, um, vector commitment scheme. Uh, look it up for a commitment. And then uh, e e ECDSA, uh, BOS, two signature schema uh, exist in Filecoin. Uh, and for randomness, we have this de decentralized uh, randomness, uh, DRAND or DRAND, uh, for providing verifiable randomness. Uh, so Filecoin is also the largest deployed ZK Snark network to date because of the infrastructure that our storage provider provides. Uh, we have um, yeah, we have some pretty amazing numbers there. Falcoin's crypto economics um, is um, um, is very well designed. Uh, first of all, the Falcoin uh, economy design is completely open source. So if you look up um, engineering Falcoin economy paper written by ZX, uh, or if you look up crypto econ lab, you will find many, many research papers behind uh, the decisions that they have made at the beginning. And it's, uh, it's very useful for many, uh, many people who are interested in tokenomics out there. Um, so Falcoin economy, if you think about that, is an uh, is similar to an island economy. You have people who are amassing uh, hardwares, um, you know, pay for electricity and running off these data centers, and they interact with developers and researchers to make products uh, and offerings to people outside of this island. Um, and then uh, uh, inside of this island, everyone uses Falcoin as value exchange, and then outside uh, we can exchange value with uh, with external parties. Uh, fills are utility tokens. Uh, it is designed to purchase services uh, that that Falcon network provides or network participants provides. Um, there are uh, there will be about um, there will be only two billion uh, Falcoins ever uh, minted or issues. That equates to about uh, three thirty million uh, minted each year. Um, so over ninety over thirty years time, ninety seven percent of the um, Falcoins will will be minted and issued. Um, Falcoin has uh, simple minting and baseline minting for block rewards. Uh, baseline minting means that it encourages everyone in the network to increase their capacity. Um, if everyone does that, the total power uh, increases, and the rewards that we give to the to the participants or storage providers and other kind of service providers will increase in the future. Uh, there is a linear vesting concept. 
uh, we do have uh, in our Falcoin allocation, we have allocation for the investors for Falcoin Foundation for Protocol Labs to run. Um, and uh, there are also a uh, mining reserve uh, to encourage new services to be established on the network. Uh, but storage, storage mining allocation is still the biggest. Uh, in uh, in Filecoin uh, coin allocation, so so the um, so out of all the file coins that's being that will be created, the storage providers will get most of it. Uh, there are concepts of deals and sectors, uh, which I'll go through a little bit later. Uh, I also have another talk in about an hour um, about storage providing, and there's also um, a concept of uh, collateral and slashing in Filecoin. If you're interested more, find primer to Filecoin circulating supply or engineering Filecoin's economy to find out the exact thinking behind it. Filecoin runs in a phase economy. So in stage one, we encourage capacity and building up the network to handle, um, uh, to be secure. Uh, so at first, a simple minting or a reward to the uh, storage providers will be quite great to encourage them to onboard hardware. At this point, there might be very little quality services um, and we'll, there might be um, very little deal payments. So deals means uh, people actually paying for storage provider services. Um, and then for the second stage uh, in the middle of the economy, uh, this should be turned around. So simple minting should reduce quite a bit. We're already seeing that uh, first wave of uh, storage providers uh, reward is reducing quite a bit. Um, and what we're encouraging them to do is to set up uh, equipment and also uh, build softwares to be able to provide services to clients and uh, encourage real clients, real data clients to use these data center services. Uh, and in the stage three, we should have our little block rewards uh, for the storage providers and other kind of uh, services providers. And they should be making, um, they should be making money primarily from their, uh, pro for pro providing those services and making deals. Uh, on the network. So we're uh, kind of in uh, in stage two or between like about to step into stage two right now for the for the whole economy. The network growth has been a um, incredible story. Um, in 2021, we only had about 1.6 uh, EB and now uh, 17 uh, EBB, EBABYTE. Um, this number is actually including the um, this number is not the roll byte number. This is quality adjusted byte. Uh, so it, it looks a lot better than the actual, uh, a lot better than the actual hardware uh, that we have, hardware spaces that we have. Uh, the number of providers went uh, to 800, went from 800 to 4,000. So I mentioned 3,600 earlier. That was 2022's figure. Uh, now we have about 300, uh, 3,600 uh, minor IDs out there. Uh, the pledge collateral went to 174 and uh, now it's 170 or so million dollars. Um, um, maybe 140, I think. Yep. Um, the orgs that are built on Filecoin went up to um, more than 500. The storage size also increased. So the number of files, uh, uh, we call them content IDs, uh, increased to 6 million. Uh, unique providers went up. Uh, storage deals, there's millions of uh, storage deals every year. Um, and then uh, total data stored, I think is up to about 700 petabyte or maybe even over one exabyte now. So e either from the whole network capacity or from the data that's been stored on Filecoin, um, it, is, um, it is the largest you know, in the world. So who are actually using these uh, services right now, right? Um, uh, and why? So the reason why people use that is, uh, is because Filecoin provides a dramatically lower uh, storage cost than traditional data centers. To store one petabyte of hard drive, it could cost you around uh, uh, $100,000 to $2,600 for a year uh, in a data center. And that's just storing there, doing nothing. Uh, a petabyte of uh, data will, will cost you that much. In Filecoin, it costs a lot less than that. So it's very attractive for people who has really large amount of data to store somewhere, uh, and they don't need to immediately uh, re retrieve it. It also improves um, data availability because Filecoin's, uh, Filecoin's storage providers has many, many point of presence. Uh, you can store your data in many places um, rather than just one data center or one company's uh, data center there. Uh, it also verifies the data storage for free, 
um, it meets, it's easier to meet regular, uh, regulatory requirements. If you're dealing with a local data center that is in your region, that understand your, uh, region's laws, uh, then say, uh, putting everything on the, on the, uh, uh, on the country that you're, you're not, you're not familiar with, and they probably, uh, the country will probably have some pretty strict, uh, data import and export uh, policies. Um, and uh, we're also very green chain. So there's a, a project called Filecoin Green that intends to uh, make Filecoin start providing a carbon neutral business and maybe carbon negative in, uh, in at uh, a certain time. So some of the feature clients are Internet Archive. There are a bunch of people who are preserving the internet. Um, there are, uh, there's U University of Utah, um, UC Berkeley, uh, CERN, uh, the research uh, science research institute in Europe. Uh, there's a there's a few other um, yeah Web3 customers as well. So OpenSea, uh, Solana uh, are all uh, users of uh, Filecoin systems. So uh, different kinds of people use um, uh, use uh, Filecoin. Um, on the on the top media companies uses Filecoin, and then uh, production events, uh, e-commerce, education, public data. There's a wide range of uh, customer segment on uh, Filecoin. If you want to find out uh, more about Falcon clients, uh, I encourage you to go to Falcon Explorer and you can scan that QR code uh, to visit falcon explorercom We will be constantly updating featured customers to this website. And some there are some really useful case studies in case you want to dig a little bit deeper on why they have uh, used Falcon. The client growth is, um, is incredible, storage client growth. Uh, so we're onboarding a vast amount of uh, of data um, on the internet every day. Um, since April, uh, by April 2023, um, uh, 1 million terabytes of data has been stored on uh, Filecoin. And these are um, the number of unique storage clients we have is 1,500. Um, and we're, on some occasions, we can onboard about one petabyte uh, of data per day. So how these data are onboarded is through uh, deal making. So um, the whole uh, Filecoin uh, market uh, revolves around storage deals. Uh, this is an overview of how it works. Uh, first of all, the client who wants to store some files will make the prepare the files for a, a friendly structure for Filecoin protocol. Um, and then it will, um, along with the sort of file information, and the deal with formation, it will make a deal, uh, broadcast the deal to startup providers that, that they're interested in. Startup providers will negotiate and um, and respond to these deal proposals. Um, and then uh, the the ones who accepted the deals will then need to receive the files. Once they have received the files, they will be providing a proof of replication on the network. Uh, that's the first message they sent to Falcon blockchain. And then once that's being produced, uh, they need to constantly provide proof of the uh, space time. So prove that they still have the file and the file is not uh, is not destroyed or, or being tempered with um, and then to the network um, constantly in order to get a block reward. Uh, over time, as long as they can prove that it's still online and then they are still storing the file faithfully, uh, they won't be uh, slashed for um, their staking uh, will, will not be slashed. Towards the end of the storage deal, the clients will need to renew the um, uh, storage deal or let it expire. Letting it expire means that the uh, storage providers no longer have obligations to um, to store this. They won't get slashed for um, uh, for for not uh, providing a good storage service. Uh, they can re recycle the sector for uh, for new files. The uh, one of the thing that is key to uh, Falcon architecture are the uh, concept of actors. Uh, actors are the things that um, in the Falcon software uh, that will do things. So there are different actors for different purposes. There are reward actors that calculates the uh, block rewards that someone uh, deserves, um, and then there are minor actors uh, that uh, help with mining operations. Uh, there will be storage power calculators. Uh, actors, storage market actors, data cap actors, uh, which are related to verified data. We give higher incentive for uh, storage providers if they are doing actual uh, storage of useful data to uh, to their clients and verify registry uh, actors. So there are quite a few of those. If you want to 
look into uh, the deeper part of how exactly Filecoin interacts uh, with its nodes and, and data clients um, and storage providers, I encourage you to take a look at the YouTube video and, uh, and some of the documentation we have on Filecoin actors. Um, but um, don't, don't feel um, uh, this is a completely strange thing. Uh, in the cyclone, if you know what hackers are, uh, actors are, you'll have a good idea of how uh, Filecoin protocol operates. Filecoin Virtual Machine uh, is our uh, way of opening up Filecoin blockchain to the vast developers out there. Um, Filecoin Virtual Machine is built on uh, Wasm and uh, the intent to build many runtimes on top of it. Um, and the first runtime that uh, the project decided to do uh, is the EVM, so the Ethereum Virtual Machine uh, standard. So Filecoin now has Filecoin EVM deployed uh, quite a few months now, um, and people are doing uh, lots of uh, DAC development on top of it. If you're interested in that, please uh, scan the QR code and uh, read more on, um, uh, on FEM. Since launch in I think uh, it was April or, or May. Um, we have um, quite a quite a big interest on FEM. Uh, there are about seventy five thousand active of FEM wallets uh, out there. Uh, there is a, a, a close to one million fields that are held by FEM powered smart contracts or actors. We call it. Um, so there's a uh, quite a bit of a trust that people place in FEM that uh, they can, you know, they can trust uh, these uh, these smart contracts with their money. Uh, TVL is around 1.2 according to DeFi Lama, and there are about 937 um, unique smart contracts that have been deployed, and there are about hundreds of hundreds of teams building on DApps. Uh, Falcon ecosystem is definitely a lot busier um, after the launch of uh, FEM. We also have built the interoperability integration with XLR and Kraken. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a few uh, Web3 partners that are building to us. Uh, if you're interested in the status of FEM and wanted to uh, have a have a look at uh, the, the details of how well it runs, um, scan the QR code and go to this FEM Explorer that Starport Ventures has created for us. Um, it's got the overall, it pulls all the data from Filecoin blockchain and then uh, analyze it and give you all the insights in there. There is a um, Solidity library for Filecoin. Um, it integrated uh, with many of the actors that I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, the, you can use these uh, actors directly in your Solidity contract if you import Zondex uh, Filecoin Solidity. So take a look at that. And uh, they've got some pretty good documentation too about, uh, about these. There is also uh, quite a few starter kits that the FEM developer experience team have created. I encourage you to take a look at the FEVM hard hat kit uh, that's been created. Uh, it's a repo full of examples of how to interact with Filecoin through FEM. The development experience and the user experience should be pretty close to Ethereum. Uh, Filecoin is integrated with MetaMask as well. Uh, you can import testnet uh, and then also connect uh, mainnet. Uh, but for Hackathon, probably you'll only be using the calibration testnet. Um, and then the deployment experience, development experience should be pretty similar to, uh, to Solidity uh, developers um, on the EVM compatible chain. So Falcoin overall, uh, the project has attracted uh, many projects to build on top of that. And we're very interested in uh, helping the teams to actually go through the funnel, um, get funding, get expertise from the, from the project, from Protocol Labs, Falcoin Foundation, all of the people in the ecosystem. Uh, and then what we want them to do is actually use the IPFS and Falcon technology, build their ventures and secure funding to build it even further. So we have helped, we're working with 15 uh, accelerators out there and then help teams to raise um, tremendous amount of capital to, to push them forward. Falcon and IPFS is a perfect combination because IPFS provides a fast, flexible retrieval uh, with this gay-based local nodes, uh, browser integration, and Filecoin is great for persisting and providing verifiability uh, for data. Uh, so together, one has the protocol of doing uh, of go of, of for file system to go decentralized decentralized um, uh, way, and then Filecoin provides the uh, the the hardware infrastructure and uh, the backup for 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 all of its content. So on top of libp 2 p RPLD, 
IPFS, um, you can build protocols like Filecoin. And I also encourage you to take these modules and combine it and build your own protocol if you uh, if you have a really good idea on, on this. Uh, also, a lot of people have turned this into a, a, a storage business model. So there are a lot of storage helpers out there, like Pinata that uses IPFS um, and NFT Web3 storage. They're charging for the uh, Dropbox storage-like systems for uh, for users to use it, whether that's uh, household users or developer users out there. So use the stack and build your project. Uh, there are some, I'll go through this really quickly. Uh, there are some products and tools you can use in your hackathon um, that will make you not only eligible for um, for the prizes that we, we give out and some of our partners' prizes, um, but also uh, if you use the right tools that can reduce your build time a lot and then uh, allow you to focus on the important part of your project. Uh, you can go to Filecoin ecosystem um, page to take a look at some of those tools as well. But today I'm going to introduce you to you uh, NFT storage. Um, NFT storage is a public group program. Uh, it is a uh, NFT for NFT, basically a Dropbox for NFT for uh, for NFT projects out there. So if you're an NFT project, you can use it for free forever, um, and uh, it works. It should work similarly to a uh, a to to Dropbox or Google Drive. Um, it has a pretty awesome uh, API uh, that is able to handle large volume. Um, and then um, the idea is that when you're minting NFT, you use NFT storage for the asset storage and then write the uh, um, uh, write the image URL or the uh, asset URL um, as IPFS links and not, um, uh, not uh, a centralized version or HTTP links. Web3 storage is the same deal as uh, NFT storage, except this is designed for general storage. Um, so it's super easy to use Web3 storage. I've used its SDKs to do many things, including this um, photo booth uh, that you can see on the right corner. Uh, this was for one of the conferences that happened in Lisbon last year, um, Web Summit. So uh, the photo booth software uh, was sending photos to a uh, to a uh, node application that I run on on one of the cloud storage uh, cloud uh, cloud cloud platforms, and then it will interpret the APIs from the photo booth software to uh, Web3 storage, and then pass back the IPFS link back to the to the to the photo booth software, and then the photo booth software will display a QR code that's got the IPFS link on that users can retrieve it from the from the phone uh, their their favorite selfie from from the phone. So it's ultra easy to integrate. I encourage you to use this in your project if you have some storage needs. Um, IPFS is also great for deploying websites. So Fleek and Spheron are two uh, businesses that, that have successfully integrated with IPFS and Filecoin. So if you uh, just connect your GitHub repository or GitLab repository to Fleek and Spheron, and it is a website, they can pull it, crawl it, and then build it, uh, constantly deploy it to the to IPFS for you. Um, and uh, I think Sephiron now also runs Compute, so you can run backend on, uh, on, on their network. Fleek might have similar plans as well, um, but uh, take a look at their tools. I use them quite often for, the, for my demos. Filecoin data tools, uh, specifically Estuary, uh, are some uh, are some tools that are really uh, helpful if you want to hide the complexity of dealing with blockchain. Um, so you can uh, install a S3 node or just use a cloud version of S3 to interact with Filecoin. It allows you to run uh, IPFS nodes very easily, so storage nodes, and then it builds all the integration with Filecoin uh, market. So you can make storage deals by clicking through the interface or by sending some APIs. It will automatically orchestrate uh, the deal making behind the scenes and replicate your data for two, six times and then uh, and then make those storage deals with uh, with uh, um, uh, with storage providers out there. Uh, so take a look at uh, Filecoin data tools, especially S3, to see how this can simplify your project. Who and why uh, are people using Filecoin? Um, one of the examples, so first of all, why will people join a storage provider business, right? So a CO storage is one of the storage provider in Europe a lot of people join this because they think this is the future um, of um, uh, of the internet. 
um, and then Filecoin has a really good economic uh, design. So they, um, it, it is a business, so they can get profit out of uh, operating. Um, you know, in the early state, early days, uh, you can just bring hard drives online to join Filecoin network and get paid for it. Uh, and that's a viable business for a lot of people. But as you know, the Filecoin economy has certain stages. So later on, they will have to uh, start providing real storages. Uh, so a lot of them are in uh, with this journey and then are very committed. So CERN, uh, Steel Storage is one of them. And it is Steel Storage, uh, thanks to them. Uh, we were able to land a, a partnership with Atlas Experiments, uh, which is storing CERN valuable uh, scientific research data uh, for CERN. Um, so this is the example of why Filecoin has a stronger proposition than really large cloud platforms out there, because uh, we are working with uh, small businesses, essentially, and small businesses are best to understand their local customers' needs. Uh, so CERN is one great example and seal storage. Uh, New, York, um, New York City open data is also stored on, uh, stored on Filecoin these days. So... Um, Public data sets are perfect for a uh, Filecoin to store because we're designed to hold enterprise level data. Um, so a whole data center, you can migrate to Filecoin and then we're designed to last for as long as possible through uh, crypto economic uh, incentives and also having so many people joining us and then permissionless entry and exit um, and, and also replication technologies that we have. Um, so, um, there are uh, many governments that are storing uh, open data on, on Falcon. Um, for media, medical and research purposes, uh, Falcon is also uh, very important because we have this verifiable data. Um, the, the, the research industry really requires um, solid, uh, untempered data uh, that they can trust. So Genray is one company that is based in Austin. Uh, they are putting uh, human genome sequencing data on uh, Filecoin, and uh, um, yeah, their their progress is amazing. So, getting close to the end of my presentation, I will introduce you a, a few things to look forward to uh, in this hackathon or beyond this hackathon. Um, so, one of them is retrieval market. So, I mentioned how amazing uh, Filecoin's storage network is. To get the data out is a different kind of story. Um, so if you want to retrieve data and, and read the content very quickly on the internet, uh, people often rely on this thing called CDN, uh, Content Delivery Network or Content, um, uh, content it's CDN, so Content Delivery Network, Content Distribution Network. Um, so to do a content distribution network or delivery network in a decentralized way presents many, many challenges. It's easy to do it uh, if you're a centralized company but it's very hard to do it uh, in a decentralized way. Retrieval.market was the project uh, program that got set up to encourage projects like Saturn and Titan Network to be built. Uh, these, are, this is, these are our approaches to building decentralized CDN and, and Saturn and Titan are both will be integrated into Filecoin. So in the future, you could see that people joining um, CDN businesses in in your maybe in your city to provide content from ipfs and filecoin and they might get paid for providing such activity or developers will pay them uh to to provide those to speed up the content delivery uh, back AL is the project that i mentioned earlier that tends to do uh, heavy computing so building up a computing network in a decentralized way and encourage intensive processes to run on storage nodes so for example if uh, filecoin is storing uh, a lot of video data in really high resolution, then Bakayao is made uh, perfectly for people who wants to um, uh, decode these videos into different uh, resolutions to serve on uh, on different devices. And moving this these uh, really vast amount of uh, data to elsewhere to perform uh, decoding and transcoding these things is, uh, is a nightmare because the uh, egress cost will be tremendous. And Falcon is also updating its uh, consensus uh, uh, algorithm. Um, the next one is going to be called interplanetary uh, consensus, and it is next frontier in blockchain scalability. Um, so uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. So retrieval market, if you're interested in that, and then Saturn network uh, is the one that's being launched. Uh, please take a look at that. I believe Saturn also has a price pool of 5,000 for this hackathon. So take a look at their dev tools out there and see if you want to 
uh, build a project related to decentralized CDN. Bakayao is compute over data. Um, scan this QR code, take a look at that. They got some really awesome demos um, on generative AI and uh, uh, batch computing of really compute intensive jobs. Um, it's step-by-step, step. they go through everything for you. Um, yeah, so take a look and, and hopefully use it in your project. And this is IPC. Um, IPC also has a price pool. I'm not exactly sure what kind of uh, dev tools uh, might be there. So, uh, but uh, take a look at the, the, the price description and see uh, if you would like to uh, do something uh, with this new consensus uh, that we're actively developing. So um, if you're more interested in the bigger picture of how Falcon is doing, what I have said uh, is just the beginning. Uh, you can read some industry reports. Uh, so some are produced by Falcon Foundation. Uh, Masari has done uh, a report on Falcon. They have a quarterly report on Falcon economy. And CoinGecko has published a state of decentralized stories that largely talk about Falcon in their report. So you can also talk to me uh, directly if you have questions. I would love to answer your questions on uh, East Global uh, Discord channel or DM me, please. I don't turn my DM off. Um, yeah, feel free to ask me questions. I may know may not know everything, but I will. I'm well connected within Filecoin and Protocol Labs teams. I will direct your question to the right person for you. Uh, so that's all from me. I think I might. I might. Uh, I'll see if there are some questions here. Yeah, there was one question about linking to the economic resources. Oh, economic resources. Yeah, really simple. Filecoin, economy, engineering, Google it. We're still Googling these days. Um, so you'd be led straight to the PDF, which uh, which gives you a high overview, higher overview of how things uh, uh, were designed for. Um, but the the one that is uh, crypto econ lab um, is the website that you need to go to to read all of the research. So I'm going to pop it into the chat um, and this Falcon economy resource over here. Yeah. So with crypto econ lab, uh, ZX is lead in this organization. Um, really amazing, amazing team there. Um, best in the business. Um, and they have uh, produced many, many resources. So if you want to look at uh, maybe, let's see, like technical reports, I think they have done some researches on how uh, FEM is going to impact Filecoin's economy. Um, yeah, they, they, have, they have all these things. So consensus scaling, IPC, if you want to read more papers on that. And they seem to have done some researches on, on fee mechanisms. These are really like good public good for for rest of the industry because they can anyone can come and see how they think and have done the the work and the the, the mass you know the the arithmetic behind things, and then you can replicate it to other projects and take parts that will benefit you uh, to use. So yeah, so it's pretty good. Take a look. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a few more minutes until the next uh, next. Uh workshop so thank you everybody for uh for joining and thanks jenks and yeah he'll be uh having another workshop in about seven minutes so see y'all again soon yeah bye cheers thank you